today we're continuing the series on the Kihon, the 30 major Kihon. In the past, there was 40, at some stages, 40 Kihon. And in the old days, there was anything up to, I think, 60 or 70 Kihon that was practiced regularly. Okay, and that approach to Kihon is very valuable, uh, you know, but you also have to be very realistic about how you apply and test the Kihon. You can't just do the, the Kihon and expect them to work under pressure, can you? No, absolutely not. Is it the same in, in athletic development? Yeah, of course it is. I mean, that's the purpose of training. It's the rehearsal um, that's so important. And I think they've got that analogy, you know, 10,000 hours or 10,000 yes, iterations, yes, yes. that kind of thing. I don't know if that number's exact or not, but no one the, does. The, the theory behind it mm. is accurate. You've got to do it a lot. Yeah. So it's the same with what we're doing with these techniques. Of course, uh, as Solsai said, uh, kumite is the lifeblood of karate and kata is the foundation to kumite. Ido geiko, moving kihon, is the foundation to kata and kihon is the foundation to moving kihon, but flexibility is the foundation to kihon. So you can never deny or underestimate the importance of just doing daily flexibility work. It's very, very important to do that. If Solsai points out that these key principles are the foundation of Kumite, then you can't deny them. And of course, uh, we say every week that Kihon, my um, interpretation of Kihon is everything that isn't the actual event. Yes. So even though we do, we talk about 30 fi foundation Kihon, you've got to look at the footwork patterns and the drills and the repetition defenses and the repetition drilling the combination and everything that you do which isn't the actual event, is a form of Kihon training. And today we're looking at the elbow. There's only one elbow which is part of the 30, okay, and that's the Jordan Hiji Ate. It's called Hiji Ate, Hiji Elbow Ate Strike. Okay, the first thing you need to remember is the elbow, a lot of people do the, the elbows kind of with their hands connected, okay. Remember, at no stage in, in Kihon are your hands touching like this, whether it's here, whether it's here, whether it's here. Anytime your hands touch, it's a form of laziness and it develops a bad habit. Okay, well, it's the same with elbows. When you get tired, a lot of people connect their hands and it just becomes a lazy elbow. You're better off stopping. Okay, you do 100 elbows, that's good. But if 98 are bad, you're developing bad habit. So what you always need to do is stay sharp with the kihon. Okay, the first thing you need to remember is you get the retracting hand and you get the elbow. You look from the side, they're, they're not even touching. The next thing from the side is there's my elbow. See the distance change? You get that distance change there like that. We talk about the five ranges. One is kicks, two is punches, three is headbutt elbow range, four is grappling stand up, and five is grappling ground. Now three I call headbutt elbow because realistically, the correct distance for a whipping elbow or a sharp elbow is the same as a headbutt. If I can headbutt Mitch, I can elbow Mitch. If I can't headbutt Mitch, I can't elbow Mitch. It's that simple. So because we're used to whacking our head from when we're little kids, you have a good sense, appropriate perception about your ability to headbutt someone. Okay, But because we don't elbow people all the time, we don't have that same appropriate perception. So if you know that you can headbutt someone, which I can there, I know that I can elbow. But if I'm just one inch back, I can no longer headbutt without launching myself forward, which means I can't elbow either. Okay, so look at the difference. Here is an elbow, and I'm probably two inches from Mitch's jaw. Now, when I extend properly, look how much distance you get. So I don't want to go and just do the elbow without any extens extension. Look, when I, when I retract my scapula, look how it separates my elbows, okay? So that scapular retraction is vital. So when I do the elbow, no scapular retraction. Now look what happens when I scapular retract. See how close it gets, uh, how much further away, closer it gets to um, Mitch's jaw. So when you do the technique, now you have to make sure that you're not here, you're there. See the difference? There. The elbows should, except for dropping elbow 
spin back elbow where you're hitting with the tip of the elbow. Cutting elbows and whipping elbows are done in line with the shuto. Shuto, knife hand. You get the radius bone on the inside, the ulna on the outside. A good elbow hits right with the tip of the ulna, right at the beginning of the ulna, and that's what you hit. And the reason they're so good is because there's no movement. When you punch someone there's, and your fist is wrong, you get movement in the hand, you'll hurt your hand. There's no movement in the elbow, okay? So that's why you always make sure, it doesn't matter where the angle is. If I'm coming up, I make sure that it's in line with my elbow. I don't come up like that, okay? If I'm coming around, I don't make, I, I don't turn my hand in a funky way that pushes the muscle out instead of the bone. I always hit up, look at my knife hand, across, down, it's always in line with the knife hand, up there, up there, down there, like that, okay? And you get the, the, uh, the whipping style cutting elbow and it's always in line with a little finger or the knife hand, okay? One, two, three. You see, it's in line with my own jaw. The height is in line with my own jaw. There, like that. The other thing that you can concentrate on, which is really subtle, is where is my weight? I have my sun chin, but when I throw the elbow from the outside of the in, there's a tendency when I throw the right elbow to take my weight to my right leg, uh, to left leg. See that? Your head sways. You've got to learn to keep the weight on the correct leg. So when I throw the right elbow, I sink it onto the right leg. When I throw it with the left elbow, I sink, sink the weight onto my left leg. And so when Solsai talks about balance being vital because he said that the the one to lose his balance first is the one who loses the fight, okay? And if you fight tournaments only, that doesn't make sense because you lose the balance. The referee goes, yeah, may stand up, everything's good. But in a real fight, in, in the martial arts aspect, if you lose your balance, you lose the fight. It's that simple. Um, big difference between martial arts and sport, okay? Tournaments are the sporting aspect of the martial arts. The martial arts is very different. And here is the main difference, according to Benny the Jet. The primary focus of martial arts is defense. The primary focus of sport is attack. In a sport, you're constantly attacking. But in a martial art, it's all about defense. Boom, you, you learn all these techniques to defend yourself and then finish the blow. That's a very, very profound statement. And that's the gift of Benny the Jet's experience. Okay, so we get this elbow nice and strong. There. Other ways that we used to we used to practice it, we'd start off, we go up. And you see that in some kata. Remember, once again, it's in line with the knife hand. So when you come up, don't turn your hand flat like that. This is also in kata as well. Make sure that the little finger is up so that the technique is in line with the knife hand. Okay? Come up. You push to the side, push back, and whip around. Come up to the side, to the back, whip around. These are techniques that you can practice. I don't have a lot of faith in these ones, but... The value of it is if someone grabs you from behind, maybe they put you in a choke, okay? First thing I have to do is clear that choke arm, okay? Then I'm going to hit in the elbow, with my elbow, bang, like that. Hit again, bang, and then I'm going to hit in the groin, bang. So that elbow creates space to hit in the groin, and then everything becomes a lot easier, okay? Whereas if you oh, – can you choke me again? If you just deal with the choke – in a grappling fashion, it's very, very hard to undo a good choker. Literally, a good choker will choke you out. It's that simple. I don't care how good you are. But you start adding elbows, 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 and it starts to, yeah, it, it changes starts, everything. It changes everything. Yes. Okay, and it gives you space to hit in the groin there. That's the difference between martial art and sport. Okay, so you can practice once again. Up, side, behind, whip it around. Up, side, behind, whip it around. Up, side, back, whip it around. See, like that, that's another way you can practice it. Now, 
In terms of two-man drills, this is a really beautiful drill that we started We started doing in 1986. Okay, we learned it off Chai Sirasudi, the great Muay Thai teacher, came and did a seminar at our dojo in 1987, I think. No, 88 even. Might have been 88 because Dave Pickford was there. Okay, so here's the drill. Okay, watch carefully. We get close enough and... Mitch puts his hands up. I've got to be careful. I can't do it with the speed that I used to do it with because my shoulder injuries, okay? But the whole key is it's all about your reaction time. You get a stimulus from your partner and you react as quick as you can. So what happens is my fingertips, see we turn around, you can see my fingertips are on Mitch's hand, my little finger, okay? That's all. You can do it with mitts or you can do it with your hands, Okay, and it's just very light. Now, Mitch kind of just wiggles one of his hands. See, like that? He just wiggled. Do it again. See that? So you just get a little movement. And that's my stimulus. And with that stimulus, I have to complete the technique. I always say you finish the technique before the stimulus is finished. Okay, so I set up and I'm going to start it off. I'll do it as quick as I can, but my shoulders are shot now. So my hands rest slightly. And he, he tweaks the hand. Whichever hand he tweaks, I bring that elbow across. Look at my hand. Comes up to Cox Cove. Comb. I bring that elbow across into the opposite hand. Like that and back. There and back. If he goes the other hand, there and back. If he goes that hand, there, back. If he goes the other hand, there, back. Okay? Now, we try to do it. A little bit quicker if we can. I'll try to do a little faster. So there. I made a mistake there. So what you do is you repeat the same problem. <laughs> Like that. That's a really, really good drill to develop your stim, your um, reaction timing. Shia, sure, on that, I think we may have talked about this before, but from a speed training point of view, the sub qualities of speed that Ian King talks about, the first one is detection and reaction to stimulus. So this is a perfect drill for that because it's exactly a detection and reaction to That's stimulus. That's what it is. Yeah. It's one of the best drills to train that sub quality of speed. So people often ask, what can I do to improve my punching speed or my striking speed? Detecting and reacting to the stimulus is the number one thing. Exactly. And it's one of the reasons that old football, like older footballers that play in the brainy positions, like think American football quarterback, think of rugby league, rugby union, halfback and five eights. It's one of the reasons that they can play later into their careers. They peak in their late twenties, mid thirties, even these days, because their ability to detect and react to stimulus is so much greater from the experience, the gift of experience they've had playing at that level for so long. That's another insight to there as well. Yes, there you go. And so, and this is why sometimes you look at someone who's been training a long time, um, it's almost uncanny. They seem like they're going in slow motion, but actually all it is is they can pick up cues, they can detect stimulus or they can, they can detect movements within your body that you can't even detect. They know you're moving almost before you do. Okay. There's one more drill I want to share. Fox. Yep. No. What's the drill? Yeah. So the drill is this. This is a drill where, and um, for me, I would ne I never had a street fight in my life. But if I did, maybe this could have happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You talk to someone, you create a stimulus. And their stimulus is you say to them, one more word out of your mouth and that's that. And then they may have been about to say to me, but don't you remember me? I went to kindergarten with you. Or your mum is my mum's best friend. I'll never know because you create a stimulus. And the stimulus for me is one more word out of their mouth. Allegedly the stimulus. Allegedly, yes. If I ever had a street fight, possibly this is maybe what could have happened. Okay. So I'm here. I'm, de I'm defensive. One more word out of their mouth. They open the mouth and what I do is toho. But I didn't go toho around the throat. I went toho. No, if I did it, I, I allegedly, you would. allegedly, I probably would have. I don't go toho around the throat. 
I go toho around the throat and the carotid sinus. You see that? And I grab there. Now I can pull their head in like that. So I'm here like this. One, two, with the elbow. And it comes back. And possibly if I did it one day, it may have been that his big brother was watching and possibly his big brother would have thought that was a quick right cross because my hand have an ex never actually leaves your chest. So it's up here. Look, my hand here, 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 here. Boom. The shorter distance the means the, it's quick much quicker. Is. Boom. There like that. And if I did it, possibly what may have happened is I might have blinked. And when I let my eyes, he's gone. But it's a very... <laughs> And the impulse on that, Shian, <laughs> yes. would be enormous because yes. of the speed and because that doesn't move, like you That's said. That's right. So the impulse is going to be yes. so much greater. It's time on target. It's minimal time on target. That's why it's called MP. The word MP, which we use in the martial arts, is actually it's even a word in uh, in other weapon, like sword fighting and so on. MP means a monkey's elbow. Really? Literally means a monkey's arm or a monkey's elbow. And it kind of... If you look at a monkey's arm in relation to our arms, they're much longer, okay? So the MP refers to using this dangerous part of the arm in a way that is deceptively explosive. So the MP literally means a monkey's elbow but or a monkey's arm, but it refers to the length of the monkey's arm being able to pull in. So in this respect, even though it's a short-range technique, it has massive consequences on the impact okay the last drill is i'm here like this so both of our hands are up i grab mitch and as i throw the elbow he blocks with cox cone boom okay then that cox cone reaches down grabs my neck boom and he hits me with an elbow and i pick it up with a cox cone once again i grab his neck knock his arm off and hit with an elbow but he picks it up with a cox cone then he reaches, no, just reaches, grabs. So collar tie? Yeah. Oops. No, no, um, just kind of a collar tie, but it's a pull in more than Oops. a pull down. Good. And then he, boom, and I pick up the elbow with my cox cone. Oops. I reach down, boom. He reaches down, boom. It gives you a lot of confidence in elbow range because if Mitch was to hit me with that, even though we're only drilling, there's a really good chance that it'd knock me out or Oops. knock me silly or do something. Okay, but this gives you confidence that you can hit it hard, and by having the cox comb in the correct position, it gives you a really solid confidence inside there. Oops. Okay, so that's another really good drill that you could do. There we go. Whoosh, hello. Whoosh, roll on. Okay, thanks, Sensei. Javier, good. Us. Mar del Plata, Argentina. Beautiful, Javier. Thanks for coming. Risky Kaharudin. That's a cool name. Us. Mac. Yes, it's a really good stimulus drill, that one. Um, I'll do it next time I see you at a seminar, perhaps. I think we did it last time anyway. Yes, that's exactly right, Marco. Um, sure, I've got a question for you. Yeah. Um, is there a difference between elbow tijate in sport, as in ring sports just as an example and the street like or just martial arts self-defense not really i'll tell you why even though there's a lot of difference between um self-defense martial art and a sport for example uh in a sport perhaps what you might do is you're here like this he throws a left right i'll go boom boom and this hand will literally just go stab straight into the throat thumb straight into the throat or thumb straight into the eye. Both of them are illegal in every sport that I can think of. Okay, boom, like that. So he throws a, a left right, boom, boom, bang, there like that, or straight in. And then I'm going to pull this in. And now the elbow you use in a real situation is 100% the same as an elbow you lose in, use in sports. But that's why elbows aren't very common in many sports because – they're devastatingly effective. There was a fantastic um, world Muay Thai and kickboxing champion on the Gold Coast, Nathan Carnage Corbett. Corbett yeah. Took out some incredible fighters with his arsenal of elbows. His elbows were sensational. Okay. Some of the elbows I like in a real situation, if I'm covering up, take the hand down, 
and just drive the elbow in straight like that. Drive under the cheek, good chance of breaking the cheekbone, above the cheek, get the blood running down there or on the jaw like that. You've got that. You've also got take that down, come this way. You've also got take that down, take this down, and then the elbow there. Because you're in the correct range for the elbow if you're in here. Headbutt and spin there like that. And that's a really, really successful elbow. Especially if someone's behind you, you, you know when they wrap their arms around you in uh, Sayenshin, often we the elbow technique, just let go for a sec, in, in the kata will step back, step back. But also some variations of it are the arm comes up. Well, what's that? What it is is you're breaking this grip from behind by creating space there. You see that? And then bang, there's your elbow uh, in the technique. Okay, so they're really good examples of how you can use the elbow. There you have it. Oh, by the way, yes, um, you um, you did a great interview. You, you were interviewed, I should say, recently, yes, yes, um, by a gentleman in North America, and I'm not too sure if it got too much. Um, it's a great interview and talks about some interesting topics in Kyokushin history and people and so on. Yeah, so, Dr. Peter Goldman. That's it. Dr. Peter Goldman is a uh, chiropractic doctor who runs a a thing called the Zone School of Healing, very w widely respected. Dr. Peter Goldman also Jap just happens to be a, uh, a high-level Kyokushin uh, tournament fighter in his day. He was a student of Soshu Shigeru Oyama, Yasui Goyama, uh, and he travelled a lot fighting in Kyokushin tournaments, so he understands the rigours of Kyokushin fighting. He also happens to be a black belt in BJJ, so he's got a really nice mix. And he did a uh, an interview. Um, let's see. Here we go. There's a link to it. If you're keen, you can go along and listen to that. Dr. Peter Goldman really knows his stuff uh, in the chiropractic world as well as Kyokushin. So, Mitch, thank you very much. Thank you. There's your elbows. The fundamental elbow in, in uh, I'll go this way, in Kihon, remember, push the elbow forward. Okay, don't connect your hands and don't go in circles like that. Keep the weight correct, Left weight, weight on left for left. Wait on wait for right, extend the elbow out, not back here, out. For the drill, you have the stimulus drill there, bang. Remember, when you do that stimulus drill, your hand has to come up to coxcomb. And we showed you why, because the next drill we did is we come in here and he throws the elbow and I get my hand up to coxcomb. So you combine those two drills together, you get a really good uh, flow, okay? Thank you, guys. Us, Mitch. Thank you, Shia. Uh, we'll see you next week. Next week, we're going to continue on with some shuto techniques. Okay? Thank you very much for coming along, us, and we'll see you next time.